Hey, how you doing today? I am Tequila Coleman. In today's video, we're going to talk about, you know, God's strategy for God ordained marriage. You know, my question I want to ask you, are you implementing God's strategy or the world strategy? When we talk about a God ordained marriage, it's all about doing things God's way. It's all about keeping God at the, you know, um, the front because this is his marriage you know this is what he wants he has a standard for these god ordained marriages so it's all about seeking god's face right but again the question becomes are you implementing god's strategy or the world strategy are you trying to bring about this god ordained marriage promise god's way or the world's way the world's way tell you it's okay to fornicate. The world's way, you know, would tell you go ahead, you know, play mind game, try to make your spouse jealous, right? You know, when God is saying, no, be loyal. Be loyal. He's like lead in love, right? The world's way, you know, would tell you to go ahead and test it out before marriage because you need to know what you're getting into, right? But God is like, no, for some of us, God has already been speaking to you way before he even revealed to you he had a God ordained spouse for you, but God was already speaking to you and telling you, stop fornicating, stop masturbating, stop watching pornography, practice self-control, practice self-discipline. He already been speaking to you about these things because he was already getting you prepared for today, right? And so, you know, the world's way, um, you know, the world's way do tip the tag, you know, soon as offense come into play soon as a you know an individual get hurt then now instead of instead of talking out this hurt they want to get you back you know they want to hurt you back right because they are the ones who who's hurting inside but god said no forgive your spouse and until you forgive god will keep both of you in a divine separation until you get your heart right so god tell us forgive your spouse for the rejection forgive your spouse for the betrayal the world's way go ahead and get them back go ahead, you know, cheat on them, you know, hurt them back because they hurt you, right? We got we to gotta stop doing things the world's way. If we want a God-ordained marriage promise, we got to do things God's way. And God's way, you know, is prayer and fasting. God will put you in a divine separation because if your spouse is, is entertaining a counterfeit, if you are even entertaining a counterfeit, if you, you know, are, are behaving in hateful you know, uh, ways being critical of your spouse, God will, God will quickly put the two of you in a divine separation. And what God is basically saying to the believing spouse, know your worth and value. Do not allow your spouse to treat you this way. Hold your spouse accountable. Show your spouse tough love. You don't tolerate criticism. You don't tolerate disrespect. If your spouse is showing you they can't make up their mind on who they want, you let them have that counterfeit until they see what they chose was not the best for them. This is what God is saying in so many words when he put us in a divine separation. Okay? But the world's way is compete for this individual's attention. Right? You see five women to one man. But what? <laughs> you know, like, come on, I ain't nobody about to play that game. So God's strategy, like I said, prayer and fasting, he will put us in a divine separation. God called us to be loyal. He tell us to operate in love. He want us to be obedient to his laws and commandments. So he's like, stop fornicating. Stop lying. The world's way, oh my God, lying come easy. The world resists accountability. They're not used to it. So this is why you see, you know, a lot of individuals just, you know, doing, just, just living recklessly because this world doesn't really value you know, accountability or being a person of character. They don't value these things, but God does. He's like, no, y'all, both of y'all stand in divine separation until you grow in character, right? Until you heal, until you learn how to communicate, you know, with one another that, you know, where you're not being critical or trying to tear this individual down, right? God even required for us to discover what our purpose is. That's not a requirement, you know, when you do things the world's way. They look at, oh, long as y'all are compatible, that, you know, go ahead and get married. But that's not enough. See, purpose is the glue. That's the very thing that's going to keep this marriage together, right? And then let's talk about covenant, right? You don't hear covenant being talked about, you know, uh, when you do things the world's way. No. 
they tell you if you want to get a divorce go ahead and get a divorce you don't gotta you don't gotta stay in that but god say honor my covenant honor my covenant scripture say what god has joined together let no man separate so the question i'm asking you are you implementing god's strategy or the world's strategy because in order for you to get a god-ordained marriage you have to do it god's way you have to let go of the control and manipulation you got to stop thinking if i play my game or if i do this to make my spouse jealous that would draw my spouse towards me yes your spouse may you know uh come towards you when they see you know when they start feeling the jealousy but that's ego that's temporarily they would come near you they would come towards you you know might it might they might do this for a, a week or or two or a month but then if brokenness is still present in your spouse if they don't lack character if they still don't see your value you're going to continue to get the same results okay you got to understand this playing mind games in hopes of your spouse seeing your value if they don't know their value how can they see their own value value recognize value period so in order to get to a god ordained marriage we got to implement god's strategy we got to do it god's way or get out of the way okay so with that i am tequila Coleman. and i'll talk to you real soon take care